feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X9. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walls Live, worldwide. Hey, hey, what's going on, family? What's up, what's up? Happy Thursday. I hope you had a great week. We got snow in the northeast. Yeah, yeah. Nothing but snow and ice in Baltimore. Owings Mills and Randall's town. Yeah, yeah. But it's all good. I think the air is clean now. <laughs> I can take my mask off. All right, welcome everybody to Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide, starring Kelly Holland out of Baltimore. And we're so glad you guys have tuned in. We have a very special guest tonight. We have author, publisher, uh, entrepreneur, Motivational speaker, Dr. Annette West is going to be here to drop some some knowledge on us. That's right, about the world of publishing and her book. It's going to be good. And she can be interviewed by Kelly Holland. All is well. So anyway, real quick, y'all, don't forget, every Wednesday you can tune in if you want to, you know, connect with the music industry. Um, this, this past Wednesday, if you want to check out the show, we had... We had the, uh, the the band of Tony, Tony, Tony. That's right, the, the the original band members of Tony, Tony, Tony. These these guys are phenomenal. Did a great interview. Um, we talked for about 45 minutes. You can catch the show. They actually have a documentary out there on YouTube. Uh, it's been shopped around, but they, 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 like, they like YouTube. Um, so you can check it out. It's called No Yo- Loyalty, No Royalty. No loyalty, no royalty. So it's a phenomenal story. It's one of the stories that you hear all the time <laughs> between um, band members, groups, DJs. You know, they start out as friends, 18, 20, and then they reach success. And nobody reads the fine print. <laughs> well, half of them read the fine print. Nobody else did. And money is passed around. And and some people got more zeros than others. <laughs> That's right. That's the world we're in. You got to know what you're doing. So you got to look for an entertainment lawyer. If you're in that position right now and look like you're about to blow up, you better go get a lawyer. (laughs) That's right. Just give him his 10%. It's going to be worth it. All right. So check that show out. Look for Merlin Gospel Live on Spreaker Radio or Amazon Music, Google, uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. If any one of your favorite platforms. All right, and this show, too. You catch this show on Pray.com. That's right. We out there with the big boys. You got Blair Underwood, Dr. Tony Evans, Joyce Myers. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Kelly's out there with the big guns, the big guns of our gospel ministry. That's right. Well, anyway, let's talk to Kelly Howland and see what's going on in her world. What's up, Kelly World? What's up? <laughs> hey, hey, Baltimore. Hey, Batman. How is everybody? <laughs> we hanging in there. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks for dropping all that knowledge and thank you for the kudos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling. You know, I just got uh, plowed out yesterday. So <laughs> all this wow. new freedom is something I try to take advantage of. And then I just got tired. Yeah. So <laughs> that stuff is work. I, I'm. I haven't really. Yes. I just finished doing the sidewalk, man. That stuff was. It was ice by the time the snow came down. It was ice under under all that stuff, you know. It was no. And fun. I was hoping it was just fluff. Yeah, that yeah. ice is what took me out. I couldn't even use the snow plow, man. I just left. I didn't even try to start it. I just said, "This, this is gonna be manual labor right here." I I just cleaned the car off today. It had about seven inches of snow on there or ice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> snow and ice. Yes, bro. But praise God, we had enough supplies, um, which we really didn't go to the store for the storm. But we were prepared in that sense where we could sit in the house for, you know, four or five days and just (laughs) be okay. (laughs) You got to stay prepared these days. You never know. (laughs) We got got some more COVID flying around now that they're not even sure the vaccine can help you. So, everybody, you got to be careful. (laughs) Just because you got the vaccine, that don't mean nothing. That's just an extra layer of protection. It's not like the first level of defense. You know, it's not like the Marines. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, 
<laughs> it's, just a, it's just like the Capitol Police. <laughs> you saw what happened to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, look at Two it like that. Drain is a mess. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I definitely am not rushing to get these um, new vaccinations. I would like them to work out the kinks <laughs> before yeah. I want to get injected with something from the government. Yeah, I think I'm going to make a request <laughs> for a company because I think they had enough losses, so they probably got it right. <laughs> so I'll probably mm. request them. But uh, we got okay. to be careful out there, y'all. I mean, I'm doubling up. When I go to the market, I got the surgical joint on, and then I got my gator on, you know, because it got to look smooth. Oh, okay. You know, you, you, you know people <laughs> recognize you. They don't care what you got. They still going to recognize you. Hey, ain't that something, hey, though? Hey, <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> no, it ain't me. <laughs> You're right. In all this time, I thought my eyeglasses, I mean, my sunglasses was keeping me incognito. <laughs> yeah. I recognize two people, two Two people. One was a homeboy, and uh, one was a guy I used mm-hmm. to manage, and I recognized them just like that, straight off the bat. Huh? And, and I was behind them. I was behind them at that. You know. Oh, uh, you must have heard that voice or something. No, they something didn't say nothing. Hit. They were just standing there. You know, people don't, you know don't really talk much. You know, on their cell phones with their mask on. So they true, were just standing. It was true. in the market. One guy was at Best Buy, and the other one was at Weiss, and I recognized them. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, well, I'm glad to have my sister on. Uh, we have a positive power sister here yeah, yeah. <laughs> tonight with been, us. She's been helping everybody, Doctor West. If you, if you, if you have some um, questionable um, uh, skills in writing, man, she would straighten <laughs> you out. She'll make you a good writer. Really? Yeah, I've heard some stories that you know you think you was good. But no, but go go talk to Doctor West and let's see if you are really that good. <laughs> you know, I know that's right. Yeah, yeah. You need those kind of people. Black people rising. Yeah, we're not doing this half work. We're not the half rabbit. We're just doing our thing. No, that was a a, a government attitude um, <laughs> filtered into our communities. We've always been enterprisers. We've always yeah. been shining. It's just that until we they got bombed our townships, foot on right. your neck. Yeah, until huh? they bombed our townships and, and ran highways through them and messed them up. <laughs> we was doing good back in the in the fifties. And well, every up. time we was doing good, they came with that ratchetness and mm. um, murdered. Mm. Uh, but apparently, white on black crime is mm. not an issue. So they break the rules so. when they're losing. You see how they tried to break the rules just this past election when they losing, man. They try to change the rules on you. That, All type was, of tantrums. Yeah. That was, that but was that a mess ain't working no more. But then you used to hear that before, <laughs> though, years ago when people say, yeah, when, they, when, you, when you're losing, you change the rules. You can't do that. <laughs> Man, they do that all the way up to the top. Change That's the what cheaters do, baby. You yeah. better change the rules. Change the rules. <laughs> you gotta maintain your cheat. It's like a Mayweather fight, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Mike Tyson. In my was fighting. opinion, he didn't win all of them. When Mike Tyson was fighting Holyfield, he said, "I'm about to change the rules. We could bite now." <laughs> Oh, he kept biting Holyfield. <laughs> he just kept biting him. He just... I heard an interview. I heard an interview that Holyfield said that he was going to get him the next time. He was going to bite him. But his buddy said, no, nah, man, don't do that. <laughs> they fought twice. I was like, wow, man. Holyfield was going to go there. Look, he said he was going to get him back. <laughs> look, he was big. And Holyfield was big. Yeah. He was making Mike look look like a regular dude. Mike, yeah, Mike, Mike wasn't about fair. to do all that longevity fighting. He, he, he ain't about all that endurance. <laughs> Mike said he grew, man. He's in his 40s and he's still growing. It's not fair. Ew. <laughs> you still growing in your yeah. 40s. Just grow outward. That Barry, <laughs> right. that Barry Bonds cure. Yeah. <laughs> Who had the big old head in baseball? <laughs> yeah, muscles growing out their necks and ears growing. All that stuff. freaky looking stuff. Oh, yeah. right. Hitting home runs with one hand. Watch this, y'all. They mutants. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> they mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> so I closed my eyes. <laughs> he was still swinging. His home <laughs> he told the pitcher, I'm going to close my eyes on your, on your fastest Fastball. Pop. Home Damn. run. Home run. <laughs> he said, Dog, go on. He sure did close his eyes, too. Yeah, man. Grand slam home run. <laughs> <laughs> like Dion. Dion said, I'm going to run backwards on you guys and score a touchdown. <laughs> he did it. I know that's right. And yeah. that's just a slap in the face. <laughs> just African Americans just make up phenomenal athletes, you know? You know, we show boulders anyway. But look, we, we can talk all night. We got to get Dr. West. Here we go. We Here yeah. we go, right? <laughs> What's up, Dr. West? She's about to hang up. What's up, Dr. West? How you doing? <laughs> Don't hey, hey, I'm just listening to y'all there. <laughs> no, we just comedians, you know, we just comedians, you know, me and Kelly. We just 
you know, we don't get to chat but this one little time, so <laughs> yeah, we little, get it all. Ten there. minutes, a little ten minutes. That's all it is. <laughs> but look, y'all have a great show. Just wanted to say hello to the the famous right, one, Dr. You. West. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. West, and and all thank you do you for care. Positive Power. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you so much for being here with me this evening, Dr. West. I'm so glad to have you on this platform. I know you have your own and we are sisters right here on the Positive Power Double XI Network. But please let our listeners know on this time slot, lady, what it is that you do and who it is that you are. (laughs) What it is that I do and who it is that I are. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know, right? It came all out all right. backwards, but I just played that thing off. <laughs> Who you are and what you do is what I usually say. <laughs> well, I am, I am Dr. Annette West. I mm-hmm. am a servant of the Most High God. I am Amen. a committed Christian. I am sold out for Jesus. Yes. I love God and I love his people. I um I do a lot of ministry work, a lot of coaching, a lot of um mm-hmm. health and wellness things. I'm I'm a self publisher as, as Jerry said. I'm also mm-hmm. at my own small publishing company and I help um faith based. You don't have to be safe, but you gotta be faith based, okay? Mm-hmm. So, uh, to write different stories, but it's gotta be clean stuff. So Right. Um, I'm just kinda doing that. Um biblical counseling clinical pastoral counseling um i have a doctorate in business and um international relations so hr so i have quite a few things behind me Um, yes ma'am everything for me is teaching everything that i do stems from my primary gift of teaching amen praise god for that um we have a lot in common um and I'm grateful to have the similar personalities on one show tonight. I um we we share a lot. Um I also do a lot of life coaching within my nonprofit. I also have a um degree in international business. Um not quite at the doctorate level. I stopped at my masters, <laughs> but um <laughs> um and I have a masters in nonprofit management. Um and I also have a project that I'm writing grants for right now dealing with anti recidivism and I saw that you also have your prison ministry that's international <laughs> national and international so praise God for you man <laughs> thank you thank you thank you for being here with us please share with our audience what got you into um, just being a servant leader for Christ how did that all take place how did that take place? I think it was already in me. I just mm-hmm. had to recognize it. Um, I can think back or people can tell me about when I was younger and how I would just kind of watch things and, and how my conversations often were a little different. Um, but I always had a yearning. I always had a yearning. Um, we went to church when we were little. Well, I went to church when I was little. So I would say before I was At least by the time I got five and under, I went to church with my grandmother, made sure that we, you know, headed down the road and made it Mm -hmm. to the church. Um, (laughs) So she was my inspiration um, that I had actually forgot about for a long time. And then when we moved to another area, we didn't, my mom didn't take us to church. And, um, but I always had like, I always like, I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I just, I just wanted to go. Did you go on your own? Yeah, I didn't know why I wanted to go. I just, because I didn't remember at that time that my grandmother always took me, you know? Okay. Yeah, but I always wanted to go. And eventually, um, we had a, a little church bus that would come by. Um, the white church uh, would come and pick up the black kids. <laughs> and take them. That was, I guess that was a community uh, work. Or Outreach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't gain anything. I didn't learn anything because um, it was just going just to be going. But right. I would say I hit my um my early twenties, about twenty one, twenty twenty one, I really had a desire to really um accept the Lord, mm-hmm. but I didn't really know how, so I was accepting him, but it wasn't the right way. <laughs> 
and you know, those are the trials and errors, but I'm so grateful to God that he's patient with us and that he'll, he'll pick yes. us up wherever we are and still yes. find reason to do his work in us. So <laughs> I, I, and you can, and you can relate all of that back to the Bible and all of the disciples and what their past lives was before they went through this major transformation for God. And so that's why I asked you that question. Like, where did it all begin? You know, um, we, we come across people and they have past lives and now they're God centered, but there was a road that had to be taken. And what type of level of obedience did you have? Did you have it early on and you just always maintained it? Or was you doing a roller coaster thing like so many of us do, um, trying to know God in the right way? You know, you hear all these things, some skepticism builds up, then you, then there's confusion is the devil. And so it's like, how do you hone in on that? Yeah, you know, I, I, my early, in my early 20s, when um, I started going to this church, um, I just knew some things didn't sound right that was being said. Like, I couldn't place it, but I just mm-hmm. knew some things weren't, didn't sound right. Um, and so I was all, I'm a, I'm a questioner. So okay. a lot of times people don't want you to ask questions, especially when they don't really know. In the church. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, why are we doing this? Well, this is the way it's always been done. I'm like, man, tradition. Growing up, you know, it's always tradition, you know. <laughs> and I don't knock people because I always realize that Whatever you're in, you're a product of it until you learn that you can be a product of something else. Amen. So that's what they were used to, and so that was their flow. Um, mm-hmm. But we had my husband and I got, well, my friend and I, and then my husband, we got married. Mm-hmm. And, and we left that we left that church eventually. But um, like I said, I always had a desire in my, um, in 84, we, my husband was stationed in Iceland. And Iceland? <clears throat> Yeah, ice and beautiful place. Mm-hmm. We had a really small cold though in the wintertime. Yeah, we had bet. A really small, <laughs> we had a small community um, church that we attended, and um, predominantly um, white church. Mm-hmm. But um, some of the most well, beautiful, spirited people that I'd ever met. Um, but was God was in crazy. Iceland? Are you telling us God was in Iceland? <laughs> you got he it. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I heard one of my discipleship sisters told me she found God in Japan. It wasn't until she went to Japan did she really find God. <laughs> well, listen, we say God is everywhere and God can do everything, so then we got to give him credit when he does do it wherever we don't think he'll normally will. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but it was Iceland that I that I started writing. So it was okay. Back in- 1984 is actually when it was and mm-hmm. I was in this little church and they didn't have much money and they asked me little old me who don't know nothing I'm like 23 <laughs> at the time uh-huh. can you teach can you teach the wee kids uh sure sure oh she took on that task y'all <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh and then they you hear it okay here's our resources we don't have any books but here are our resources <laughs> So here I go with paper and and pen and pencil and dictionaries and commentaries and concordances and they're they're there for me and that's what I learned how to basically I start out learning how to write Bible studies for kids. Okay. Well, that's good. So that was it, my beginning to writing, but as far as uh, uh, wow, the <laughs> staircase, the up or down in my walk with the Lord. I will say no, and the reason I say I didn't have an up and down once I accepted the Lord mm-hmm. fully was because my heart's desire was was the Lord. Now, remember I said when you first start out, you're a product of what you are connected to. Correct. So I still learned some things. You know, there was a season where I thought it was okay for me because what's expedient for one may not be for another. So, okay. you know, Go to the club. My husband and I used to go to the club and dance. You know, we won't do nothing but just going and dancing, just relaxing, just chilling, you know. And then getting up on that? Sunday, you know, going, getting up on Sunday morning and going to church. Why did I do that? Because that's what I had seen growing up, right? Mm-hmm. But I had to learn that for my walk, that wasn't going to be, I couldn't stay in that posture. because Not the whole time, right. My testimony needed something else. 
How'd you know that? Like, where was that feeling? You know, I just, God gives us all missions, right? And um, most of those missions he gives us, we don't feel equipped for it in any type of way. And yet we still take on the task. Um, and so it takes a lot of faith, a lot of obedience, a lot of discernment to make sure that what you're doing is of God and not of your own mind. And so I'm grateful that you were able to share that um, you never really had that experience of backsliding in that in that way. You were you were sounds like you were centered in God from the day your grandmother put you in that church. Yeah, well, we, well, look, I guess my heart was, but my mind won't. So I had, some <laughs> actions, I had some actions, okay, that wasn't, you know, I, that I know wasn't pleasing to the Lord. And even when I didn't think that I was with the Lord, I always had in the back of my mind that, you know, this ain't right. <laughs> and there were, you know, like there were some things that I wouldn't partake of anyway. Like I grew right. up saying, I'm never, I'm never going to smoke. I'm never going to drink. I'm never going to do drugs. And those things I stayed true to because Amen. I, was always, I was scared that I would be the one that would try it and I would get addicted. Oh my gosh. And where would we be so, now without and, Dr. Annette West? Where would know, we be? That was my mindset always, you know, and it was based on things that I had seen with other people and how they had gotten addicted to it. And I was like, yeah. mm, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to act like that. I could see myself dancing up on the table, not on drugs. So I can't see myself <laughs> dancing on the table, okay? <laughs> she just got, got that natural warped. high, y'all. <laughs> I got a natural high and a warped sense of humor sometimes, and I don't do drugs. So just imagine if I did. No, nah, honey, we love that natural high. We need people like you in the world filled with all that joy and praise God for it. And thank you for sharing your journey and how bold you are in Christ, because a lot of times we just needed to be reminded. We need to be reminded of why we're here and what is our purpose It's not to necessarily live this grandiose life and have done nothing for anyone across our path the whole purpose is to bring those closer to christ whichever gift that we have to get that done god allows us to do it until he places on us a god-sized mission and then that's your stage of transformation amen but please tell our audience more about your book that you have out right now oh which book am i talking about today? well i am talking about centered in christ Okay, Centered in Christ. Great. Okay, because I was like, which one of these books am I going to be talking about? So, I know that's right. I know that's right. So, you say, I, I got checks, honey. Which, which name a book? <laughs> <laughs> centered in Christ. So, Centered in Christ came out in November of last year. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it, has done, it has done well. And this book is a compilation, it's an anthology. And okay. we had nine, eight authors and one poet that wrote in the book. Beautiful. And it, the book is really about how women in their journey shared a story of how they were able to embrace their relationship with the Lord, even though they were going through something. How they found their center in the Lord in the midst of what was going on in their life. How they were able to stay, um, re- be resilient in the process of what was going on. How they oh, didn't Jesus. allow the, the downs of life to keep them down, but they chose to look up to the Lord and to mm-hmm. see the light of Jesus shining in their life. In their life, you know, uh, you know, think about this. You know, walking toward Him. You know, always mm-hmm. keeping Him as the focus, right. helping us helping us to be, to do the work so that the greater that he predestined for us begins to manifest in our lives. Amen. And so, come on. Go ahead. (laughs) I love it. Come on, Pastor. (laughs) I wanted more. (laughs) Our being diligent and obedient Mm -hmm. to what God is saying to us. And what is God saying? He's saying something different to each one of us because we're not all in the same place. But yet we all can still find our center in the Lord. Yes, we can. Yes, we and can. So and he will meet us. Great feedback from this book. 
I, be, I bet you have. And it sounds like you picked a great team to contribute to this part of work here. Um, was it easy, the, the business side of it? Um, you was able to produce something in the midst of COVID, which is just a whole nother level of success right there. Um, but was this a project that was difficult? How were you able to gather your contributors? And what was what, what is the overall business side to put together a project such as this? It's a, it's a time consuming process. Um, but I mean, you know, if you have everything in order, I, you know, and, you know, with that business administration, you know, mm -hmm. I really tried to lay things out and I gave, you know, a, a, um, basically an agenda of what was going to happen, when it was going to happen, what the expectations was for everybody, all the timelines were there, um, what was needed at what time factor, you know, reminding people, I'm not going to be asking you for this, you know, like, I just mm. need you to do it, you know. Exactly. Um, this is your contract. If you pay your money to be a part of this, this is your contract. And mm -hmm. um, I really had a great group of ladies that I worked with in this book that were committed. And anytime you, you're, even when you do your own work, you struggle sometimes because you True. think you know, you wrote it, it's right. But then when somebody else look at it, they'd be like, hey, uh, what about this? You know, exactly. And can you take that? Can you take the criticism? You know, that's a whole nother level. People will do stuff and they're like, this is my baby is perfect. I'm like, well, no, there's some areas where we can adjust. <laughs> I, I must admit, I was blessed. Normally, people will put out a clarion call. So they'll say, hey, I'm, and I may do this eventually. I have an anthology coming up. Would you like to be part of it? And mm -hmm. if you are interested, this is the information. But I prayed about it, and the Lord gave me um, the lady's name, and um, I reached out to the ladies and asked them if they were going to be interested. <clears throat> and um, all of them that I asked said yes, except for two. That's okay. So Sounds like you got a pretty good turnout. Yeah, this isn't the norm I'm being told. But um, I guess I was connected to enough people that they felt mm -hmm. comfortable working with me. And so um, as far as working with the people, it was an easy process because I'm really a people, I'm, I'm a people person. So I really mm -hmm. know how to engage and talk with people. And I always want everybody to feel like they're at their best, Amen. even if something isn't right. How do you do that? I want to, well, okay, so for instance, if if you wrote something and I didn't think it was its best, I might mm -hmm. just say, how would you reword this? Okay. And, you know, and now which one of these do you think really sounds better? And does this really get your thought out? So it's mm -hmm. really about guiding them and asking them about themselves. Because sometimes when people write, I know I write, I leave I leave words out of when I'm writing. Like, yeah, I'm oh, we do that unconsciously. Right. We do that unconsciously. No, Right. And we'll fill it in if we proofread it too early. <laughs> yeah, right. But and, then even, and even when we think we've filled it all in, we're still going to have some, you know, some, some issues, you know. And then, of course, you sometimes have, you know, some people whose writing isn't as strong as, as others. Mm -hmm. as you would like for it to be. You work with that. I mean, like, we don't throw them out, you know. <laughs> so, so you just know that you may have to spend a little more time with one or two then you know and that's just the way it goes well you made it sound manageable if nothing else and i guess that's why you have the phd <laughs> amen amen and she phd or not i would have still been able to do this because administration is here i go again is one of my natural gifts that the lord mm -hmm. gave to me that I had when I was young, um, and so I've always had the gift of administration. So it, that those type of things come easy for me. Praise God. You know, what could be a struggle for one is just a, a easy talent for you. And that's a blessing in and of itself. Um, because you were able to put together this network of women um, to help you with your project, is it possible that they will be able to maybe branch off or do something else outside of you? Or were they already professionals in their field? Or what type of contributors did you um, actually get? 
I think everybody that wrote in this anthology, one was already had poetry and and books that um that were already published. Okay. And she's a school, a school teacher. Mm-hmm. Two of them that were that wrote in the book with me. Um, they were also I was coaching them working on their own book. So they were doing okay. two projects at one time. And so wow. they actually published their book. Um Sabrina Blanding Johnson, she was on one of the earlier shows, um, of Jerry's shows, talking about mm-hmm. her book, um, Broken into Purpose. <clears throat> and I can't think of the other one. Um right now. Of, Yeah, I can't think of the other book. Okay. But um so so basically I had two that were working on publishing and one that was published. So out of nine people in the book, four of us had some experience. Um, and then the other, you know, and then I just happened out and those, those other five, three of them were good, still good writers, you know, <laughs> and so, like I said, you know, so just a couple of them that we, you know, really had to put some extra, some extra time into, but that's just the way it is. But, um, the book itself, <clears throat> even though I published the book, their mm-hmm. personal content that they put in the book, they're free to use that any way they choose to anywhere else. Amen. That's not common. So, in the book i own the rights to but their content that they put in the book they can go add it to something else doing and that's fine um what we're doing right now is i have a book club dr annette west book club Mm -hmm. on um dr west book club on facebook and so um we're using this book as of the 25th of january so we're going to have a a eight week nine week study on the book Mm -hmm. So really it's a book discussion because we don't study. Everybody studies before they come. And then we just have an open platform on Zoom where everybody comes in who wants to come in and talk and share. And they talk about the topic. And if the author is available that week, then the author comes in and they lead the discussion. Amen. They should. It's their work. That sounds like an interesting time. Um, and it reminds me of my discipleship circle. Um, <laughs> you know, we got to read and come to class prepared. And sometimes we go off into all these life experiences. Then we got the tissue because somebody's crying and you know what comes down with tears. Your nose get to running. And so, <laughs> so it's a good time. And I actually, um, promote uh, social groups, Um, not necessarily um, social media the way we use it, but I think social groups are healthy and it gives people an opportunity to meet new persons with interests uh, such as with similar interests as themselves. Um, And it's also a great time where you can be comfortable in your growth um, with your talents, especially when they're based around our savior. Um, But I also want to ask you, what made you want to be certified in biblical counseling and clinical pedagogy? pastoral counseling um, when you were already doing life coaching. I mean, life coaching is so vague and open. You could have filtered in your love for God and your service for God through that one title. But why the three certifications in addition to your doctorate? <laughs> so, okay. So, so, so let me tell you this. Um, I was a life I always, in the back of my mind, thought, oh, you need to, because you're a preacher, you, you, because you're an orator of God's truth, um, you should have a theology degree, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's what I was saying. And so when I was getting ready to go back and finish my undergraduate degree, I was going to go to the theology degree. But the Lord said, that's not where I told you to go. Okay. It was so I stuck with business administration. When I the school when I was graduating from, it gave me a scholarship for me to get my master's. So I didn't have to pay for my master's. So Thank I was like, oh, and they didn't tell me what degree I could get. So I said, well, I'll get a um, biblical studies. I said I'll get a you know a M mm-hmm. a MDiv or something like that. And the Lord said I didn't tell you to do that. So I wound up getting a master's in management science and human resource management. And mm-hmm. then when I was going to go with my doctorate, I was like, okay, well I got all of these. Cred- I'll get all my degrees, you know, with business and management and human right. resources. And I'll get my doctorate in theology. Lord said, that's not what I told you to do. And the, <laughs> reason I didn't tell you, and the reason I didn't tell you to do that was because I don't want you to think that you got to have that degree to do what I need you to do. So that's where I wind up getting the biblical counseling certification through the American Association of Christian Counselors. Then, okay. you know, I'm passed. 
I was already doing the clinical, the pastoral counseling at my church. So I just decided, okay, well, let me get this clinical pastoral counseling certification, okay? <laughs> you know, I, and then I got the holistic wellness life coach. Then I got the life coach. You know, I got the master life coaching certification. So it just, you know, they were just things that became available. And I just went on and I had time. I just went on and got them, you know? Time and availability. I, there you go right I, there. That's <laughs> and I've been working. I've been working from home for the last 20 some years. Oh, so COVID ain't nothing for you. <laughs> Basically, no. <laughs> <laughs> ain't hurt nothing over there. <laughs> it didn't shift anything from me other than, okay, now there's not going to be any going out and having business meetings over right. lunch. Oh, and, and how how money saving is that? Right? I mean, your taxes may not like it, but yeah, I'm sure your pocket does. <laughs> oh, it's been, listen. I, hope, I mean, you know, I know a lot of people saying COVID is like the worst thing that happened, and there are some I don't negative. Think so. There are some negative outcomes, you know, some health things, you know. There are some deaths, but I, for me personally, um, it's been a time of motivating and encouraging people that I know, and even that I don't know, that follow me, okay, this is your season to do something. You've been talking about, I don't have time because I'm always at work. Now there you, you go. Have to be physically <laughs> and you're now in your home. Surely, you're not commuting to work now. You're not having to get dressed up and go to work. You're not having to pack lunches and do all of this stuff. Surely, now you have some time, that you a window of time where you can work on the projects that you want to. And yourself. Amen. Yes, Time and availability. And I, I, mm -hmm. Yes. And I've told people, if you came into this pandemic and you leave the same way, there's a problem. And that's why <laughs> when people say things like, oh, I can't wait till we get back to normal. Look, For that what? Normal, that normal has passed. That's yes. what I'm saying. What we going to do is just stop washing our hands and stop wearing masks. I don't, I don't, and, and, and now you get to roll up on my back again. I don't want none of that. <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's what I say. I'll be like, you know what? Just like they do in a lot of these Asian and other countries, they wear their masks all the time when they leave their home. They, they do. So it doesn't hurt us. It doesn't hurt me to put on a mask. And what it will do for me, it'll tell me, okay, you need to get back in the house now because you're sweating too much. Get okay. <laughs> <laughs> your glasses done got steamy. <laughs> and yeah, don't forget yeah. to wash your mask, people. Wash your mask if you have those reusable ones. Please wash your mask. <laughs> you don't want to yes. smell that old breath, and neither I do wash, we. <laughs> I, wash I wash my mask consistently, yes. And check them filters. Somebody said, well, I'd have had this filter in here for three weeks. No. Why? Filter in for more than eight to ten hours. So if you wore that man <laughs> three days, you'd have met that eight to ten hours. <laughs> People, 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 and you wonder what, what type of rules that they grow up with. <laughs> None. You know, <laughs> you know, washing hands for 20 seconds. I thought that was the norm. I thought that's what we did anyhow, you know? I, and you, you know, we know the people that walk out the bathroom and don't even hit that water. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I used to work. I used to see enough people make it to the bathroom and they would come out and not wash their hands. And I'd be like, you know what? That's why when they have, um, what do they call it? I'm right there with you. I'd we don't need like, you know, everybody potluck. Who made this? I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> Look, I snacked in my office before I went to potluck. I got me, back then I used to drink soda. I used to get me one of them little, little peanut orange sodas, and I'm good. I'm good. You hungry? No, I'm good. <laughs> You know, it's all type of cat hair in that dish. And somebody done licked their fingers and tried to toss it and all of that mess. <laughs> I'm no <Look>. thank you. <laughs> no thank you. Look, you see enough stuff in the office anyway, so you just have Oof. enough. So what? You know, I was tell um I was telling somebody they was like, well, um, I hate potluck. I said, well, this is what you do since you gotta go. Think mm -hmm. of something that you wanted to try, but you didn't want to buy it because. Just in case you, in case you didn't like it. This okay. I'm like, this is the opportunity to buy that particular thing and take it to the potluck and be the first one to get some out of it. Then if you don't like it, they're going to eat it anyway. It don't matter what it tastes like. <laughs> she had the whole thing worked <laughs> yeah. out. 
Okay, I thought we was just doing little Sam's Club samples, but she. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I'm having so much fun up here with you, Dr. West. I don't know what else to do, but I definitely want to give you an opportunity to let our listeners know what books you have out, how they can find them, how they can reach you. What's your website? Honey, this is your time to plug, plug, plug. So plug away. <laughs> All right, so listen, everybody. There's two books right now. I got more than this, but there's two mm-hmm. books right now that I really want to emphasize. Third one, I'm revising, but Centered in Christ, most definitely. And listen, you probably mean you probably saying, well, it's for women. I'm telling you, men are reading it and are enjoying the stories and learning some things. So Centered in Christ anthology, and the other one <clears throat> actually will be released on next week on the 10th of February. And Mm -hmm. that book is called Marriage Connection, Making It Work. Oh, Jesus. That is a book of eight writers, seven writers, eight writers, something like that. And these are micro stories. So they range anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 words. So they're Mm -hmm. longer than the stories in the anthology. But they are detailed stories about a couple's situation or how they, you know, found that connection that they needed with everything that was going on in the marriage. So, um, and my story will have you laughing because because I'm saved to the bone and I cussed my husband out, okay? (laughs) I'm just, I'm just being real, okay? Well, I'm glad you are being real, honey, because sometimes uh, <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Then we try to judge. These Christians can't be doing this stuff. Like, look, check this out. God is working on me. If all I do is cuss a little, he going he gonna to figure that out before my time is up, okay? Like, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> it, won't, it won't. I would never say God is working on me, but what I will say is, I was in a fresh season where I thought I was where I needed to be in the Lord. And when that happened, it let me know I wasn't where I thought I was. And then Mm -hmm. I had to do what? I had to work on that thing because, hey, this was early in our marriage, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought everything was wonderful. I thought I didn't cuss no more. (laughs) (laughs) I hadn't cussed for over two years. I thought I didn't cuss no more. But I hadn't been delivered from cussing. Okay? That's what I found out. So anyway, it's a hilarious story. (laughs) I get it together, you know, and I actually, Mm -hmm. we actually give steps in the, um, in the marriage connection book. Okay. Not just what happened, but how we came through it, how we found our direction back to that connection and in the Lord. So everything is about the Lord. So those will be the two books, Centered in Christ, Marriage Connection, Making It Work Right Now. You can email me at jetnaypublishing at mail.com if you like. You can go to my website, drannettewestministries.org. It has everything on it. And if you want to Amen. purchase book, you can purchase them at jetnaypublishing.onlineweb.shop. jetnaypublishing.onlineweb.shop shop and if i would leave you with a a quote it would be a two-part we are to strive for our best in all areas of our life the Mm -hmm. second part of that is remember you are the visible manifestation of his invisible presence how will you amen i like that I like that a lot. How will you shine? Okay. Challenge accepted. <laughs> there we go. So it's always the sunshine. Well, I'm walking in sunshine. It's S O N S H I N E. Okay. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We well, <laughs> amen to that. I am curious. What is your favorite Bible verse for the week? What are you holding on to this week? Oh my gosh, what am I holding on to this week? Um, one of my favorite verses is let me let me let me tell you, and I don't want to paraphrase it, 
Okay, we coming. We coming straight from the Bible. Is this NIV? Which one we using? Um, King James. King James. Three John one two. Mm-hmm. One two. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. Mm-hmm. Now that's just nothing but a happy little praise. He wants us to have good, good health and a strong soul in him. Amen to Christ. Amen. Amen. I like to pray for my guests, but Thank from you. time to time, oh, well, you're absolutely welcome. <laughs> but from time to time, I like to ask our guests to pray for us. And this okay. is one of those times, Dr. West, would you please pray for everyone listening? And everyone that's partaking in this interview. I sure will. I sure will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) God of glory, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you, great God Jehovah, for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for, for everyone who is a part of this show, Lord God. Kelly. Jerry Royce, Lord God, and anyone else who's a part of this, Lord God, I just ask a special and continued anointing upon their lives, Lord God. I just ask that you would just pour on to them right now, Lord God. Saturate them right now, Lord God, with your Holy Ghost power, a fresh anointing for all yes, of the people Lord. that are listening, Lord God. May they yes. be empowered in their spirit, Lord God. I pray that they heard something, Lord God, on in this show, Lord God, that would make them consider how to rethink something in their life, Lord God. Thank you for helping us, Lord God, teaching us, Lord God, guiding us, Lord God. Yes, so God. We- in you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because we realize that without you, we are nothing. And we thank your Holy Ghost for keeping us, for leading us, for guiding us, convicting us when we fall short. Help yes, us God. Get with the things of the Lord. We thank you right now, Holy Spirit, for what you are doing in our lives. And we, we just pray right now, Lord God, that the angels will Remain in camp around us to protect us, Lord God, as we go forward. Yes, Amen. Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for that powerful prayer, oh, Dr. Thank West. You, oh, that was beautiful. And listeners, please, please, please check out her books. Check out her website. Please support Dr. West. She is a part of our Positive Power Double XI team. And this lady here is magnificent, truly blessed by God. Thank you so much for your gift. Thank you so much for your 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 dedication and your walk with Christ. Thank you for all of the people that you've been able to touch. Thank you for everything that you produce because it is all of the works for him. So I am grateful that you were able to join us this evening. And I hope that you can come back. Maybe when we're in the studio, we can all get back in there and put out some visual content for our audiences. We've we've missed you guys. And so... uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Batman, are you there with us? Would you, do you have any last words for Dr. West? Thank you, Dr. West. We appreciate all you well, do. Gary. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> all your work. Amen, amen. <laughs> and so that's a wrap for us. Thank you again for joining us this evening, Dr. West. And thank you, listeners, for joining us. We are so grateful to have had you. Please tune in next Thursday at 10 p.m. for Positive Power Double XI uh, live Jerry Royce live and Kelly Holland. And never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Good night, everybody. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. In Philippians 4, 6, 7 say, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then know, and if you don't, if you want to know what that means, well, God tells us that we should pray to him for thanksgiving and make our request known to him. Stress it out. Pray. 
Once you've prayed and have asked God for his help, let go of it and leave it in God's hand. The end of the verse explains that God's peace will guard your hearts, your mind, and Jesus Christ. Because he is the blood and you're covered. Don't worry about COVID, y'all. Jesus got us. Just live your life. That's right. Live it to the fullest. Manifest. Whatever you've been dreaming of, whatever visions you once had as a child, go do it. It doesn't matter. Just do it. All right, y'all. I'm Jerry Rose Live Worldwide, a.k.a. the Batman of Charm City. Don't forget to join us every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for Triple Podcast, y'all. We got some powerful people here, y'all. They will help motivate, lift you, and sustain you. That's right. And they teach and they coach. All right, let's, let's, get, it. let's get out of here, Batman. We out. Hey, my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Prozzi Power 21, Jerry Watts Live, worldwide. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double XI. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.